We welcome you not to New Kids Ministry. It was the greatest, the fastest, anointed, friendly, loving, kind ministry in Lower South Carolina. And we want you to continue to keep coming to our site. We thank for the comments even today on Pastor's videos from yesterday. And we thank you for um, all that you're doing, even in your own ministries, and, and being encouraged by our ministry. We tonight want to thank the parishioners in this church for standing in the ministry. Because a lot of times, you know, there's battles raging, not only inside and the outside. And then with people collectively in different families, on your workplaces, and sometimes people want to scatter. They want to sit down because our flesh says we don't want to go any further. But your spirit man wants more. And you have to begin to understand and discern. This is a spiritual warfare, and sometimes things have to be taken care of in the spirit first before you actually see the natural. But everybody wants the McDonald's thing. Niles, well, and Lores is Bojangles. That's the new place. Everybody wants to be in Bojangles, wants to be in the line. You get it, get it, get it fast, and get out. You know, and you all want all the other places, eating places here in town, are left with nobody at it. So a lot of times people want to go to the fastest place to get the most glitz, get the most excitement get the most joy, and then carry it home, and then the next day, okay, let's unpack what was just said. What is God saying to me? But a lot of times, people are not taking personally the Word of God, so they really can't discern what is the gospel in their life. You know, I can't look at somebody else's life in this ministry even, and say, well, I'm, I can compare, this has to be this way, and this has to be that way. No. Everybody has different roots, everybody has different things going on in their life, and all of us are different. All of us are trying to work together to fit together and to be formed into the head, Jesus Christ, and, and this particular body of Christ that God is building. So you are um, having difficulties even in your own life or the mystery where you're at. Sometimes you want to jump ship, but God is saying don't do that. He's saying plant yourself. Plant yourself. You are like a tree planted in living waters, and when it takes root, it has to go very, very deep to be able to stand the storms that's coming up in your life. You've got to be able to withstand that what is coming against you or is in you. You know, a lot of times we, we're walking through a valley of a shadow of death, and we think all this is out there. We want to blame it on Sally Sue. We want to look in her face. Well, maybe it's because of her. Well, she was removed. Well, what would happen? It's not her. It's something within you. And God wants to deal with that, and he wants to loose you from that. It, there's so much entanglement, even with a net. There's so much entanglement with a net that it takes a while for that to be spaced out and be able to be used. And that's actually what God's doing in your life. And so we can't be using our own functioning brain. We have to begin to use the discernment that God's given you. And if you're not understanding what discernment is, it's a gift from God. And we all have discernment as we grow and mature in the spiritual realm. But a lot of times we want to label things because of what it looks like. Because, but he says don't judge things before the time because he's actually doing something in that thing. And the reason why I have that preface before this is I want you to go to um, Jeremiah 42. And as like I said, we all have hallways in our life. We all have circumstances, situations that God is walking us through. We, we actually don't want to be in a valley because we know in the valley it's a shadow of death. In other words, we're having a death in our life. But also, while we're having a death, it then becomes war, and you've got to fight a giant. And that giant sometimes is within. You're not only dying in there, and now you have to have a fight going on and a struggle to see what it is has to be done. What now has to be got rid of in my own life? Or, God, are you just going to pull it up and throw it out like Jeremiah did and then replant on the inside? And a lot of times it takes a lot of spending downtime with God. You've got to sit yourself down and you have to have a relationship with Him. And you know, you can't just say, okay, God, I'm here now. I got five minutes and I got to be out the door. I got to hear something from you. He'll sit you down, all right? You might be late for work because God wants to speak a word into you and you have to give Him the time. You, you have to give Him space and time. Sometimes it's hours. And if you'll do that, is honoring God, you'll really hear what God is speaking to you. And most of the time, you'll, you'll hear what he's speaking about other people. You'll say, oh man, I was so off. Why would I think that? Why would I feel that? Why didn't I know that? Because you weren't listening to the power of the Holy Ghost. 
you know, and he is resident in you, but you want him to indwell every part of you to get understanding of what it is and why you're in a place that you are, what, what the circumstances. And then, you know, when you get out and you kill your glass, you can stand next to the person in the foxhole near you and say, you know what, this is what's coming up, this is how you do it, and this is how you can do that. You know, it's strategic, it's wisdom. Just like people sometimes at work, they know that I'll pray for them, and a lot of times they'll ask me, and then they'll just maybe talk about the situation, like the girl that came in today. So, you know, I got this pain over here, and I feel like um, I, I've had it before, and I'm, it's it's an ulcer, and I think I have one. And I flipped around, I said, listen, and I called her name, I said, don't say that you had that. Say you have the symptoms of that. And she says, you're right, because you said that before. And then I had to get all those medicines that I had to go through all that, which I said, cut it short. You don't have to go through that. So then I was still going on. And then she yelled out later, she goes, well, are you going to pray for me or not? What it did was it began to teach her at that moment that she can believe God not to have the ulcer and go through all the medication, but she can, you know, be prayed for and, and, and resolve it. So then I took time. I said, God, is it now? I went around back because always confirm with God. What, is this what, what you want me to do? I mean, all the time you don't have that. You just have to go ahead and lay hands on people. Went around and I laid my hands on her stomach there and I began to feel the heat that God was, you know, using sometimes to not only come upon her, but to show her that there's something going on. A lot of people, they, they need to feel something. They need to feel something. So I felt the heat and it was very, very hot. And I said, she, and then I got a word. I said, Alice, God is giving you peace in that place right there. He's only healing you because Jesus, when he healed, he forgave them their sins. That brought them peace, and then he most of the time healed them. But he said, rise and walk. At the same, there, there's an activity that we have to do too. We have to get them out of that place. I says, Alice, what you, God, what you do is just move that worry out of the way. Let go of what is causing the symptoms. Do you get you all stirred up in there? You know, because your nerves will make you anxious in there, and you can't unravel that thing. You know. No money can stop that stuff. You know, it takes the peace and shalom of God. And so I felt it going over her, and she said, okay. When she said, okay, well, then you could, her countenance really changed. And then she was okay, and then I was okay. Because sometimes I'm, I'm getting disturbed where I'm at because I know that God's doing something, and I don't know if I'm a part of it or not, or if just let it go. You know, because you, really, you have to understand where you're at, what you're doing, and how you're doing it. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot to be a doctor. You know, we're assigned patients, and we can't be practicing. We have to know what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us, and then we have to administer what it is that we need done. Just like with the conversations, your counseling. Our counseling at the time, <coughs> sometimes we can hear all the abject and all the problems, but then, but wisdom of Solomon, bring the two, bring the two women, Okay, we'll cut that baby in half. Oh, no, no. So it's wisdom. Sometimes we have to use wisdom in the circumstances and, and then not even add our two cents. But this um, chapter 42, we find that there was a kaboom, kaboom with uh, these particular um, in company of people. And they were fighting each other. One took over, you know, so and so, all these tribes, and, and so and so, and all these, and all their names are going down if you want to really get into it. And I think it's very interesting, but for time's sake, we're not going to go into all that, but I want you to know to pick it up in, at the beginning of verse 42. After they had won all these battles, then all the captains of the forces, of Joanna and the son of Korea and Jezehiah and the son of Hosea, and all people from the least even unto the greatest came near, and said in Jeremiah, which was a prophet one at the time, and know this that each one of us are a prophet, priest, and king. You are a king of a domain that he's given unto you. There's the kingdom of God within you. Jesus is the king, but you are supposed to be ruling and reigning in, in your own possession, your own vessel. It's his vessel, but you have command over it because you can discipline it. You can discipline your own body, your spirit, mind, and soul. And you have to know how to formulate that. And as the priest over your house, you know, it's for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And as the prophet, you can prophesy in your own life and other people's lives. So that's why the tongue is an unruly member. It can be set on fire. And we're still learning to discipline that. Because, you know, we can strike out real fast, you know what I'm saying, because we don't understand it. And, and I'm, I'm still working on that myself. And I know you, we all are. And nobody's being condemned.